Below, you'll see a table of safety equipment. Make sure you pay particular attention to the way this table is divided into two separate sections. You'll see compulsory safety equipment and recommended safety equipment. Compulsory safety equipment basically speaks for itself. If the water police pull you over, you fail to carry a life jacket or you fail to carry flares where you're required to, that will lead to an infringement. Recommended safety equipment goes back to our safety obligation. Failure to carry the recommended equipment leading to an incident, for example, it's not compulsory to carry an anchor on board your vessel. Failure to carry an anchor, the boat broke down, the wind blew up on the rocks and the vessel was hulled and sank. In a court of law, they could turn around and say, you deemed to sat you, you failed to satisfy your safety obligation. So the bottom table is a list of recommended equipment. Highly recommend that you carry all this stuff on board your vessel. So folks, don't forget, every time you go out on the water, you're going to have to give everyone a full life jacket demonstration, how to put one on, where they are, and a full safety briefing right through the boat safety equipment. Welcome aboard. Let's do a full safety briefing through this vessel. Let's start with the life jackets. You now need to do a life jacket demonstration for all your passengers coming on board. So let's go through it. Doesn't matter which way you put this one on, over your head, arms through, pull down tight, bring it round, make sure you tie a nice big bow just here so it's secure. If you had to exit the vessel, hold down nice and tight or it's going to smash you in the nose, we'd exit through the rear of the vessel. If your life jackets are now under hatches or hidden in compartments, there's a new life jacket sticker requirement. This is now a new law. Up here in the glove box, we've got our torch as our signaling device. We've got a little chart of the area that we're going to go boating in. We've got a few manuals and we even have a fire blanket. You know, great idea that you could smother the fire. We also have our EPIRB, if we're going outside two miles, we're going to need to have that EPIRB. You can always double check it before you go on the test facility. It's a good idea. Come forward of the boat. I have a grab bag. This has a nice V sheet in it, which is the distress signal pretty much anywhere in the world. Also have a set of in-date flares, they only last three years, two red, two orange, complete set. That way someone can grab that bag in case of an emergency. Also have some spare tools and some extra engine oil if we needed it by chance. Over this side I have the bailing bucket with some rope on it. Also have a full first aid kit, everything's in date. So we've got some plenty of drinking water, there's a few bottles in there, enough for everyone on board for the day. So as we come back through the dash, we have our sounder GPS, I'd always make sure that works. VHF radio, make sure that's in on channel 16 and good to go. Back of the boat, we actually have the fire extinguisher. Always make sure that's in the green and we're good to go. Make sure you've got the right size anchor. Make sure you've got the right anchor for the bottom type that you're going to be fixed to. Make sure with your shackles they're nice and tight and they're moused in. I just used a zip tie. It's a pretty good job. Make sure the chain's secure. Make sure your rope's in good order and hasn't got any um, cuts or worn. And make sure, definitely, tie it on at the other end. It's a big one. One last tip, make sure you keep the weight even in the boat. Don't have all your passengers one side. Make sure it's all evened out with every passenger on board and any weight that you got on board, big eskies, etc. I always tell people to remain seated. Three points of contact at all times. Both feet, one arm hanging on never have a problem. That's my tip for boating.